So, um, veganism. Mm. <laughs> I, you know, we have good friends who are vegans. I respect them. I respect their choice. Um, I, I disagree with them. Um, and I have my reasoning for it. Um, I don't want to bash anybody or, or talk badly, you know, but, but I would like to hear, you know, you, you are, you very much stand up for um, treating animals right, and then many make the point, well, then you can't kill them at all, you know, so, so how, why do you think, um, or what are your thoughts on veganism, is it sustainable, is, you know, let's just... Sure. Well, yeah, I mean, there's so much wrapped up in that question. Yes, yes. Let me, uh, let me address it a couple of ways. One, there, there are kind of two threads of veganism. Uh, one is that, that there's no moral justification for taking a life. Mm -hmm. that, that's, one, that's one thing. And they equal it to human life. And, yes, right, right, yeah. right. Okay, so, so let, let's deal with that one first mm -hmm. uh, because that's the one that's most, uh, well, it, it, it's the most... Uh, I call it an urban disease. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it doesn't indicate a new state of of, um, of of cosmic awareness. You know, on some spiritual moral plane, it actually indicates um, an unprecedented devolution into disconnectedness and um, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, misunderstanding of how the ecological thing works. So the fact is that the, the circle of life is, you know, life, death, decomposition, digestion, regeneration, life, death, decomposition, regeneration. You know, this is mm -hmm. the, the circle of life. And, and the truth is, everything is eating and being eaten. Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe it, just go lie naked in your flower bed for a week and see what gets eaten. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, everything is eating and being eaten. And one of the most profound spiritual uh, uh, foundations of understanding is to realize that, that without death, uh, there cannot be life. Uh, you cannot have life without death. And so the vegan who who uh, doesn't eat animals because they don't want to kill anything, um, you know, uh, um, Lair Keith makes the point in her wonderful book, The Vegetarian Myth, you know, that, that actually there's way more death occurring in a plant-based diet than in an animal-based diet because you are planting all these annuals, you know, soybeans for tofu and, yeah. and, and vegetables and whatever, which is wiping out wildlife and songbirds and indigenous, yeah. you know, whatever, um, that, that require the perennial, you know, the prairies and the wild and the trees and all that. And so, um, so the amount of, of uh, life from worms to bacteria to actinomycetes and whatever that's being killed to do the tillage and the and the growth of the of the vegan diet is um, is almost uh, you know unprecedented. Now, the second thing is that when you eat a carrot, we now know we now know that plants communicate just like animals. Now they don't make moo and they don't say oink. Uh, but they, they communicate in chemical pheromones. Right. Um, and they respond. They respond to things. Uh, they have a language, the, the cellular language. So um, to, say, to say that uh, because a cow has eyeballs and a carrot doesn't means that the, that the cow, you know, we, 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 put, we put additional... Um, you know, sentience, but all of life is sentient. All of life is sentient. I mean, when the acacia trees in the Serengeti um, uh, emit uh, pheromones that make the leaves bitter as the giraffes graze, communicating, giraffes are coming, they're eating, make your, make your leaves bitter so they won't like them as well, that's sentience. Mm -hmm. when, when the maple tree withholds its sap um, in the spring, when a wind blows, because if a branch falls off, I want to be able to have a, a sap of blood flow to the wound. And after the wind stops, okay, now I'll let it run in your bucket again. That's sentience. Mm -hmm. And we now know that, that everything is pulsing with sentience. It's, it's, not, it's not some, you know, uh, uh, whatever, fateful, you know, in, inanimate, inanimate thing. Mm -hmm. And so 
Um, so that that's where we are, and and um, the the idea that you can actually sustain life without killing anything is an incredibly uh, anti-ecological, naive idea. Mm -hmm. And then if you say, but animals are more valuable life forms than carrot, carrot life forms, um, then you're simply being extremely, um, uh, what is it, egocentric. That, that, that's the height of egocentricity on, you know, on the uh, environment. So, uh, so I, I don't buy the, I, I don't buy the uh, the moral high ground that you know that, that we can that we can live without killing something. Vegans kill as much stuff as I do, um, or more. I would suggest because because when a cow eats a eats a grass plant, it doesn't kill the grass plant. Uh, so you know there's actually more uh, more death there in the vegan. Now the other thread then is the nutritional one. Um, well, I, I guess there's another thread that is, you know, that that uh, that, a that animals are inefficient. Mm -hmm. We could actually feed more people if we mm -hmm. just did uh, vegetables. Well, the problem with that is, the problem with that is that um, that vegetables extract fertility. Annuals extract fertility. Perennials increase fertility. The energy flow in the two things is different. The annual takes energy from the soil, pulls fertility from the bank account, and puts it up in a, in a succulent, you know, a squash, a watermelon, a seed, all right, um, and, and it, it's, it's extractive. A perennial is regenerative in that it's taking the solar energy and plugging it into the, into the soil base via carbohydrates and, 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 and carbon dioxide pumping into the soil. And so that's why all of the rich soils on the planet, you know, they didn't develop under tillage or under annuals, they developed under perennials, prairies, you know, the, yeah. the poplars of Argentina, the, the, um, you know, the plains of, of Africa, the Serengeti, the steppes of Mongolia, the Midwest of America, you know, these are all places, I mean, even Australia had, you know, massive, um, uh, wombats and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, herb herbivorous kangaroos, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Europe was full of great big fauna, you know, mastodons and, and all this stuff. So, so the, the great soils on the planet were developed under herbivores uh, because, because of the perennial, and the perennial needs to be pruned. You know, just like you prune a, a grapevine or an apple tree, the pruning actually stimulates additional, you know, uh, vegetable production. So, so to say that we could actually, you know, feed people, there is not, to my knowledge, to my knowledge, there is not a single produce operation in the world that does it without animals. Mm -hmm. they, either, they either bring in fish meal, they bring in composted manure, mm -hmm. something, yeah. something. There's not a one that I'm aware of that is animals because there is no functional mm -hmm. animalist ecology because manure and urine are magic. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is nature's engine. The third thread would be nutritional. Mm -hmm. uh, meat's bad for you, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. And, um, and, and, and the problem with that is that um, a lot of the studies, including the China study and different things, uh, have been completely um, proven to be unscientific, uh, bad methodology. And um, and you know and now we're seeing you know the paleo movement and the you know these uh, these other you know diets that are moving away from carbohydrates because your body simply can't manufacture the quality of essential fatty acids A D E uh, you know there there are numerous of them uh, and enzymes that you get from meat. Uh, you know, yeah, you can you can get some from vegetables, but in order to get enough, you'd have to eat, you know, five pounds of carrots a day, for example. And nobody's going to eat five pounds of carrots a day. So when I say, yeah, you can get them all from vegetables, yeah, you could if you could eat, you know, two bushels of vegetables a day. 
And uh, I don't think too many people are eating two bushels of vegetables a day. So, so the, you know, there's a reason why Italy, for example, there's a reason why Italy last year passed a law outlawing uh, feed, uh, parents feeding their children a vegan diet because basically our brains are fat. Our brains are fat. They need that fat. And so uh, in, in Italy realized, you know, what these parents that are feeding their kids a vegan diet, they are abusing their kids, turning them into functional, you know, dysfunctional humans uh, because they don't have brain development. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, we're going to see more and more and more of that. Mm -hmm. 